can see it just kind of floating on top of there just now. It's not actually on top of the tube. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back to the channel. It's that time again. Yo, sound the bill. It's another beautiful day here in Southern Utah and we're gonna be working on the Scottish hammer. Now I'm so excited because we're already five episodes into this build series and the tub is almost 100% done so we're gonna be able to take that off but today we're gonna be moving on to the axles. Okay, and here they are a little closer. Here's what's different about them. They're a custom 14 bolt center section made for larger, stronger tubing, and they're custom width. Of course, just like Nessie and Mischief Maker, custom width is kind of what I roll with, so I'm not gonna break that tradition. Now, as you can see, the axles are bare, and you're probably wondering why. Well, I'm gonna let Walter explain this one. There's honestly, four main reasons you would order bare tube axles. Uh, number one, they ship faster. When the manufacturer doesn't have to attach brackets and worry about what setup you're gonna have after the axle leaves their facility, you get it faster. So bare tube, easy choice. Number two, we weren't really in a position to deal with bare axles before. Every other set of axles we've ordered has come pretty much built and put together and we really needed that. We have a shop now. We're in a position to attach our own brackets, make our own brackets, and experiment with parts that um, we get from other partners. So we're gonna do that, because why not? Number three, there's a legitimate reason to get bare tube axles when you're gonna do as much modification as we plan on doing to this axle. So to add brackets, to put on trusses, um, you know, uh, you need to put heat into the axle. Uh, and you don't necessarily want to do that with the center section in there, with the locker, the years. You don't necessarily want to do that, especially with seals in there. So it's better to do it just bare. And then number four, we know a few cool people. And we can get our own internals, and we don't necessarily need to worry about getting those from the axle manufacturer. So just a bonus of, of you know the relationships we've built over the last four or five years. And we know we're dealing with custom widths, so we need custom parts. So something that's a little bit easier for us to get our hands on than maybe the axle manufacturer. So, uh, and then just a little bonus was, this is a small company. This is like a small business in the off-road space. Yeah. Dude's name is Austin. I think his name is written on one of the tubes. It is. Uh, the company is called TTR Axle, and we love supporting small business. Obviously, small businesses don't do things necessarily, you know, it's, it's not a profit center for them. They're doing it because of, they have an idea, they want to make it work, they want to make money in it, and they're passionate about it. So it's just cool to do business with those types of people. So yep. thank you, Austin. Thank you, TTR Axle. Yes, thank you. And guys, I cannot wait to show you what we have for these. While Maddie and I work on the axle, Walter's actually recruited some people today to work on some stages from the previous thing that we had done. I'm going to let him explain that to you and let them take that over. But for just now, I want to take you in and show you something that I find pretty cool. Okay. Here is what I'm excited about. It is always so hard to give you guys a realistic view on the differences between hardcore off-road parts like I have on Mischief Maker and Nessie and the absurdly massively strong parts I'm gonna be putting on this project, the Scottish Hammer. Now, let's head on over this way. I wanna show you the difference between an aftermarket kingpin to a super kingpin that we're gonna be putting on the Scottish Hammer. So check these out. This is what's going to be going on to the Scottish Hammer compared to what we have on Mischief Maker and Nessie right here. Even better still, let's head on over to the two separate axles. Now take a look at this. We're going to be working with a much larger diameter. That's four inches by a half inch wall tubing. And you can see how much bigger the C's are as well between typical aftermarket kingpin and the super kingpin C. So we're going to be working with absurdly strong part that should last the test of time. Now I don't know about you guys but the side by side really helped put things into perspective for me and I hope the crazy size differences between the two setups translated here on video for you guys. 
Okay, first up is the rear truss, which is a perfect opportunity to let you guys know that this episode has been brought to you by TMR Customs. Now, I've been a long-term customer of them, and if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that there are not only builder parts, but shop organizational brackets all over Mischief Maker TV shop. Um, like this tube notcher here, the tool organizer right here. What about these parts right here? Or this tiny poster right here. Now, if you guys need any builder parts from TMR Customs, check the link in the description below. Do I have a code? Heck no. But as a very happy customer, I can attest that every single part is worth every penny. And the customer service will leave you very impressed. All right, Maddie, we all know that with custom parts comes complications. So we're gonna be starting on the rear truss today and we're gonna basically see if what we've ordered will work with our axle today. Okay, so like Holly said, uh, I'm on a separate project right now while Maddie, hi Maddie, is working on the axles with Holly. Uh, we're gonna be finishing up the tub. So we got a lot of stuff in place last time. There's just a few things to finish up. Uh, and I have some special guests today, Marlon and Luna. These guys have a channel, it's called Off-Road and Chill. You've seen them on our channel before. If you haven't, go check it out. We'll put a link in the description so you can easily get to it. And they're gonna be helping me. Okay, this is gonna be a few step process. So number one, we've got this uh, floor rack that we made. This is the new substructure for the tub. And that substructure is going to bolt uh, from the side into the fender wells. And from the top of the angle iron, it'll bolt to that nice floor piece that Rudy and I made in the last episode and is ultimately removable. Yeah? That's the idea. Let's do That's it. the plan. So we can take this thing apart after we wreck it. Hopefully we won't wreck it though. We're gonna cut this thing apart. We've got two things to do. The holes are already drilled in it for the inner fender wells. And this is the height that it's gonna sit at here, which is why it's marked. And we've got to take about an eighth of an inch. So we decided it was better to err on being too wide than being too narrow. Uh, so we definitely erred on being too wide. So time to uh, fix that problem. Maddie, what is the first thing we gotta do? We need to open these up a little bit more to fit this. So what I actually did before, we took a look at this before, cheated a little bit, and this is what happened. We need to cut here. All right. From here. Yep. Get this to set down, and then we'll have to cut these, cut these. open to get this to sit down in there. Okay, here's what's happening. Let me spin you around. So essentially what we need is we need these plates to be made wider so that we can get these two plates to sit wider in the groove to fall down onto the four inch tube. Oh, look who it is. It's Tom Tom. Well, hey Tom Tom. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. How are you doing? Doing good. We're just drawing parts and trying to cut them out right now. Wow. I feel really bad now. I feel like I'm just another yeah. one on the list. It's more fun. <laughs> do you have like a sketch of what you're trying to do? If you want to just run over to my house right now, we're out here, and you can drop it off and I can, I can figure it out. Yeah, that would be awesome. Are you sure that's okay though? Yeah, absolutely. We're here doing this, so just stop by. Okay. If you have free labor, Kevin can help on those parts. <laughs> Amazing. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye. Okay, I guess we're heading around to Tom Tom. He's going to take a look at it and hopefully get that done for us. Okay, off to Tom Tom's we go. <gasps> All right. We are with Tom Tom. It's the next day and he cut out the parts. 
are amazing. Hope they work for you. Me too. We're gonna see if these work, so. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, good luck. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. So we obviously got those parts from TomTom. Tom. We need to open that up a little more because it doesn't quite fit in. Then we're just gonna work from there. But we gotta get that done first so that we can actually get the parts all together. sitting exactly where it should be but we are way closer than where we were before Again, the whole reason why it's not working is because this is made for a three and a half inch tube. This is a four inch tube. So everything's sitting a little too high. We had those brackets made by TomTom Tom to try and widen it so we can break it down where it needs to be. We're not quite there yet. I think we're not there though. Right, it's time for a lunch break. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, it's been a couple hours. We did a lot of trimming. We had to, we actually forgot about notching, which I'll show you in a second. The tubes that Holly and Rudy put in place to hold up the cage were in the way of the floor that we had designed previously. So that took a little bit of work. And what we have now is a piece that will perfectly slide into place and hopefully bolt together. Ta -da. What, what was that? Ta -da. There we go, that was better. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't look like much, but uh, let us slide into place and we'll show you what it looks like and we'll go from there. Would you look at that? Perfect. Yeah. Well, that's a prank. Feel good about it? Yeah. <laughs> that, that looks really, really good. Yeah, so basically, here's the line that we set for the floor. We are in line with that. We have notched for the tubes that are gonna serve as the 
Uh, base for the cage, don't mind that. We forgot to turn the gas on. Still a good tack though. Um, same thing on the other side. We're basically all lined up. Everything is where it needs to be and our aluminum plate's gonna sit perfectly on this. Now, we will have bolts holding the aluminum to the side. We will have bolts holding these uh, angle iron pieces to the inner fender and everything will be one rigid structure by the end of the day. And it's going to look so good. So this part's done. Marlon and Luna have to run. They have stuff to do, they tell us. We don't know what it is. <laughs> I think they're lying, but that's fine. Just um, saying, Team Walter, we're we killed it today. Yeah, we did, <laughs> Team we, Walter. We did our thing. All right, guys, thank you for your help today. Yeah, thanks for letting us join, appreciate no, it. No problem. And yeah. aluminum tough time. Explain to everyone what we're doing right here. So when you weld a truss on, and this is super double secret probation stuff, um, if you stress the axle housing downward, if you're welding the top truss on, um, what it does is after it's all welded and cooled and you let it go, the housing rests back into the truss. So now you're already using the truss where if you just weld it on, you can, you'll find at times the housing will bend and things before you get into the truss. Um, and it essentially doesn't work right. And I learned this from a guy that builds landing gear for the B-1 bomber, so it, has, it hasn't failed me yet. <laughs> I used to break front ends all the time, dude, in the J-10 truck yeah. racing. I even trussed out. I mean, he showed me this and I stopped breaking them. Wow. So have any of you ever heard of this before? Have any of you ever done this on a truss before? Leave your answer in the comments below. It's pretty cool. I know I've been welding a little bit here and there, but this kind of had me a little, not worried, but I was like, oh no, I actually have to do it now. And I'm really, really proud of myself. Look at these, look at these things. Freaking beautiful. Heckle yackle. It's one of my favorites. Whoop. Maddie. They look good. Yeah. Yes. They're looking fairly groovy. Yeah, so we sucked them down we before down. we welded. Well, and I sucked these plates down to yeah. re-weld that. Yeah. And now they're in perfect place. Heck yeah.
Woo, what are you doing now? Peeing it. So what does that do? Let's the stress out as it cools. All right, it has been quite the day. I didn't realize that things were gonna take so long by putting a truss on, but we've involved almost everyone in town. Mm -hmm. We've had Tom Tom give us new uh, Make new parts. Centerpieces. Exactly, they worked perfectly, and we managed to get everything on here. I, I'm gonna big up myself just for a second and say my welding is coming on pretty good. It's definitely, definitely. Just definitely. Okay, I thought there was just no words after no. that. Just definitely. Yeah, no, so really happy with the way everything has gone here. Haven't quite managed to get the top on yet, but we're waiting for everything to cool down, to be honest with you. And again, it's just part of the process. I didn't realize that everything was so timely. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about everything, Mandy? Happy. Happy? Yeah. Well. You know you got the thumbs up when he says happy. I'm so happy that Off-Road and Chill came in by and helped Walter with back end of the vehicle. It looks like they had a lot of fun and they, it looks great. It looks it great, really it looks good. really good. I'm really excited about this YJ project. Every week we do something more to it. I get even more excited and I hope you guys are feeling that too, so. It's gonna be good when it's done. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a nice rig. Yes, but anyway, we're gonna head off, maybe have something to eat now because it is kind of late, so thanks for watching. <laughs> what was that? That was my exit. Oh.